Hello everyone, welcome back. We have another little uh, snow system going through right now after we got the 8 or 10 inches yesterday and you know the day before and yesterday. This one was supposed to drop 3 to 5 inches but it didn't start this morning, it slowed down. And now it's finally snowing out pretty hard and they're saying maybe 2 inches. So. And then after this, we're going to go brutal cold. Like right now, it's 16 or 18, de uh, 18 degrees out. And then we're going to go down to like 6 below tonight. Then I think we're going to be 14 tomorrow, which isn't too bad. And then the bottom drops out. I think then the following day, the high is like 6 below. We have some nights where it's going to get close to 20 below zero Fahrenheit. So like always, you get through the snowstorm, and then we go into the deep freeze. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. I have a small project out here that I want to do for uh, inside the mudroom. Let me run these boards through to get them cleaned up on this side and then I'll kind of show you what it is. this little project here, you know, I'd come home from work and then my lunch pail would sit in the mudroom or the room where the washer and the dryer is and I then took it out because, you know, my work schedule is pretty much done for right now. So it wasn't in there and Melissa said, you need to bring back your lunch pail. I says, why? And she said, because when I put my shoes on, I would put it on the edge here to tie them. So I thought, you know what, I should make a little stepping stool or a little bench about this size that can sit in there and I think I've got enough of that lumber that I built the kitchen island table and then the stand mixer table and those two stools so I can make a little tiny matching uh, stool here and set it in there. There's, there's lots of other things I want to do. I thought this morning I'm gonna I want to come out here and I should build my smoker because uh, the smoker that I did all my jerky in before which I had for Oh, I must have had that thing for 10, 12 years at least, maybe 15. Anyway, the bottom was getting rotted on it. So when we moved from the hobby farmhouse, I got rid of the smoker, but I kept all my racks the, that were in there. And just yesterday, when I do that smoker, I use hot plates. And uh, so I ordered two of them that'll be here tomorrow. And I thought, yeah, I'm gonna get going on that project. Then I come out here and I thought, eh, I really don't feel like doing that. So I decided to try to do this. The only reason I'm doing this is because every time I do any of these little tables, there's going to be one person that comments that says, why didn't you use the biscuit cutter? Why didn't I biscuit them together? And on these rough tables like this that I do, there's absolutely no need to do this at all. But just to prove that I have one, I will biscuit these, glue it, clamp it, and I'll still end up putting a board underneath it. So it's like it's not really needed, but it'll keep the comments at bay.
All done. Just need to put a few more coats of poly on there. I'll see if I can get out tonight yet and put one more coat. Cute little stool though. Completely matches what's in the kitchen. Well, it's just almost 9.30, but I want to get one more coat put on this. Okay everyone, well we're going to call it a day for today. Tomorrow I think I'm going to drive Melissa into work because the roads are going to be bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I want to run up to Menards or Home Depot and get a couple things. She has to do end of the year inventory, so she has to go in tomorrow. And I will just go up to the store and get a few things. The stove is filled up. I'm going to kill the lights out here, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. Got the stove going out here. I sanded the little uh, stool. I'm just going to let it warm up in here for a little while, and then I'll come out and put another coat on this. I just got another coat put on here. Looks pretty shiny right now, but it's satin, so it'll dull up. I'm gonna start my truck and let that warm up for, I don't know, at least a half hour. Buzz Melissa in to work to do her stuff, and I need to go to Home Depot or Menards or whatever and pick up a few things. and I went out for lunch at Wide World of Wings in Superior. Dropped her off at work. She's doing inventory and a bunch of other year-end stuff. And I am going back almost to by where we were eating to go to Menards and pick up a couple of things. Inside for 45 minutes or so and did some comments and I'm just gonna put all this back together eventually I'll give it to Zach and I'm sure he can get this thing running in no time but I want to get it off the workbench I got things cleaned up a little bit in here. 
the little stool here, it's still, and that's not quite ready for its last coat. I will get that last coat on tonight though. I'm going to run back inside. I'll come out here in about an hour, put that last coat on, and we'll call her a day. Good morning, everybody. I was just watching some turkeys. You can't see them with this camera, but there's a whole bunch of them running through the woods in that far corner. Nine below zero right now. I started the workshop stove a couple hours ago. Zachary should be stopping by here in, I don't know, maybe an hour to pick up his fish house heater. The little footstool thing or sitting stool, whatever you want to call it. It's all done. I'll bring it in in a couple hours. Zach should be here in probably maybe 10 minutes. I really need to get that four-wheeler out and push the snow around. I'm supposed to get up to 13 today. Maybe I can do it later. I made that thing for towels in the bathroom. I'm not even sure if I even showed that once it was up. I mean, it's just hanging on the wall. But then uh, we were talking, I should put something underneath it and put dowels in it. That's why I went up and got dowels at the store yesterday. So we can hang our towels on that because now we have a hanger thing on the back of the bathroom door that we hang them on, but if the bathroom door stays open, uh, it doesn't get a lot of air back there to dry the towels out right away. And I cannot stand having a damp towel if I take a shower. So it'll be nice to have them hanging more in the open where they dry right away. I'm going to use 5 16 dowels and the hardest part about doing something like that is getting them all exactly the same. So I'm going to make a little, uh, oh, a little jig here I'm going to put it at a 15 degree angle. That's about, that's a good angle. I mean that's, if it's hanging like that, that's 15 is good. But they all have to be exactly the same so I'm going to make a jig. Fish. Yeah, I haven't ever tried like big lake. We, well, we should just plan a day then where like I'm going to go to Louisiana either the 12th or the 18th. I'll probably be down there for a minimal amount of time, but under two weeks. I just need to get those cabinets in and so Melissa's going to be going down in February for two weeks. Well, she'll have a week of driving. She's going to go down and spend a couple days with Brandon. And, you know, I mean, it takes her two days at least to drive down and then spend some time with her daughter and go see her mom a little bit and then come back up. But anyway, I'm not going to be down there for six weeks. Like last year, I was down there for at least six weeks. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, I think about that house before I got down there. I mean, it's, you yeah. know, so I'm going to go get that done, then I'm going to come back up. So I should be easily, I mean, last year, by the time I get back up here, it's after February 28th, probably you catch the Oh, yeah. So it would be fun to go, but we, we should, as soon as we can drive out, I mean, unless we wanted to take a load of four wheeler or do something, we could. Uh, we should go to Denver to try to get some good pictures. I want to go up to the tent more this year. Like, I could easily just throw the snowmobile on the trailer and I could buzz up there tomorrow. Yeah. Two hours, buzz in and buzz out. The thing is, then does that take away from the winter trip? Because I almost have to do the winter trip first. Because uh, 10 or 15, yeah. I know exactly where it's at. Right? No, you need that flat top. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do that. And then I might put the thing on the here that has wheels. It's a whole thing that comes up and you can just be able to run on it. I push it out of the way. I forgot all about it. It's something that happens. You should get one time black. So it might be an iron to me. I went ran, it would be fine. I figured it could not if it quits in a year, I'll just go buy another one. Yeah. <laughs> How can they make a motor for $120? You know? Think of it. It's How are they doing that? China. Yeah. Okay, that's a good project for me then. Do little stuff, you know? I've never, never had one. I don't know how anything spins in there, but like the guy said, with the blades, you should be able to get in there and spin it to break the motor loose. But
and I don't know, I can't make it move by hand, but right. it's probably going to take a little more than just my hand to move those things. It's kind of right. scary, like when, when it's going, I don't want to be anywhere near that thing, because right. I mean, your fingers will get locked right yeah. now. Right. Yeah, and it's kind of a, I mean, at least it's belt driven, so you'll be able to tell yeah. as you do the lever and it tightens to see if it starts moving, otherwise the person will really have to grease it, I don't know. Or how stressed she was before all that, you know. She was so worried about that. Right. Let's see if that. It's a barracuda. Right? Yeah. It would, it's good to get that one out and then get a different one dropped in there, so at least we know. But everybody was saying those predators. Right. And when I when I look them up, they look like a clone of the Vanguard twin cylinder. Um, I thought the exhaust was different, but I, I was looking at it again, I don't, I think that the exhaust we have bolts up, it might even come with an exhaust. I looked at quite a few of them, so I can't remember all of them. But, well, let's go for the Predator, see if we can get one, because everybody has said that they're good. Yeah. You know, before we do it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean?
There we go. That feels way less claustrophobic around here. <laughs> I get the question quite often, why do I push the snow back so far? A couple of reasons. I, this is just the beginning of winter, so I mean with the tractor I can push anything, but if I'm going to plow with the four-wheeler, I need to plow it back so, you know, because once you push this and it hardens, you're not going past that anymore unless I tractor it back. And the other reason is, if you have ever let a dog out that needs to use the bathroom in a foot of snow, <laughs> they need somewhere to sniff around, and I'd rather it be away from the house. I don't even know if I talked about it. You know, is that you seen when Zach stopped by and he uh, picked up the wood chipper that has the motor on it that is froze up, and then he picked up the other motor that was on the log splitter. And if he can't get the other one unfrozen working, I'm sure he can get the log splitter one going, and he'll just put that onto the wood chipper. So, and then he got his fish house heater and everything and we just uh, sat in the workshop and I don't know probably talked for at least two hours it was I think it was more than that it was nice to see him though I don't really think I've seen Zach since deer hunting maybe I don't know it's been a while I decided to come out here and work on this uh, thing for hanging the towels which is kind of what I started with this morning. jig here which I started showing that before but I just drilled a 5 16 hole through this at a 15 degree angle and the way I did that was I cut this board at a 15 degree angle put it like this and then ran my drill bit right along there and it went through and it doesn't have to be a perfect 15 degree angle but every single one of these has to be the exact same angle. So otherwise, you know what it's like when you have a board and then you try to put screws in there to hang something and one is up more and one is down more? We don't want to do that when we're doing the dulls because it's just going to look goofy. I'm going to put this little stop on top so that I can pull down and it's always in the exact same place. had to search around for this hammer. It, we always joked about it in the hobby farm house workshop, you know, having this little kid's hammer around, but you'd be surprised how many times 
you just want a little hammer instead of a 20 ounce Franklin hammer. We're going to want these holes spaced equally apart. So the first thing you have to do with that is pick how far in you're going to come. I'm just going to do two inches to my jig. Uh, do the same on the other side, then we can do the math for all the center ones. And it's actually going to be easier for me if I spin this around so that I'm drilling this way versus trying to come in this way. And I just chose to go down the, so far because like the dowel it's probably going to stick past this, maybe about that far. I don't know. I'm guessing I want to be out two and a half inches. And if I get too high, since that shelf in that bathroom comes out here, you wouldn't be able to get your towel in there without, you know, getting frustrated. So I'm staying down this far, coming in my two inches to here, using my speed square to keep all of this square. just drilling right through it. Do that one first, then I'll do this one. Now that I have my two holes drilled, I can measure there and I have 28 and a half inches center to center. I wanted to keep this somewhere around the five inch mark for the space between. Um, but you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 doesn't come out to 28 and a half but 30 is closer than 25 would be. So instead of making it quite a bit wider to make it work, we'll go under a little bit and you know, that'll still be fine. I wanted to keep around five. So what we're gonna do is take 28 and a half. We know that we're gonna have, you, you gotta figure out how many spaces. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces would get us to 30. Uh, so now we're going to take our phone and we are just going to divide 28 and a half divided by 6. And there we can see it. I don't know if you can see that, but it comes to 4 and 3 quarter inches. So we're only losing a quarter inch out of that 5 to make that work. So now this is going to seem more complicated. We're doing center to center, but remember how I marked where the side of the... Um, jig went right here so it's easier for us to measure from that mark and do the four and three quarter every time otherwise I still have to guess at where the center is so we're just going to go here and mark all of these four and three quarter And now what we're going to do is just go through and drill all of these holes. step now is how far out do I want these dowels to sit and I'm thinking probably around two and a half inches that's going to be plenty since I only have one hand The way I'm doing this, I drilled that hole all the way through the board for the dowel to go in. So for the least amount of work and not have to cut these off afterwards, we need to cut each one of these exactly the same length. 
or you're going to slide down it and one of them is going to be out a little bit and one of them is going to be in. And the easiest way for me to do that, actually if I wasn't doing a video, I would just put a pencil mark right here. But we have other options that we can do. By clamping the stop right here, all I have to do is select, put it against there, cut, get rid of it, put the next one against, cut, get rid of it. And they'll all be exactly the same. Next up now when we drive these dowels through, it's going to hit the back side and that's going to stop it. But I ha I'm going to clamp this down because if I tap through and this rides up at all, there again it's not going to sit flat against the wall and the dowels are not going to be sticking out the same amount. I mean this is just a safety precaution, uh, but not a bad idea. Next, I'm going to want to get a little bit of glue on here because it's the only thing that's going to hold these. Luckily, I'm not going to be staining this. It's going to get painted. Otherwise, I would be concerned about glue getting on the face of this, and I would want to just put it down the hole and maybe use a Q-tip to get it around there. But I can just shove this in and clean it up with a paper towel, and it'll be fine because it's going to get painted. So now we can sight right down them and they're not completely perfect because we're you know running a drill bit through a piece of wood jig but still it's pretty darn close. going to set it right here by the wood stove, let that dry for about an hour, and then I'm going to come out and throw a coat of paint on that. So I'm going to bring this project inside and be back out here in an hour and we'll throw some paint on the other one. I never did get out here to put a coat of paint on it, but I did just load up the wood stove. It's time for bed. Good morning everybody. When I woke up it was 11 degrees, that was about 5 minutes after 4, and now it's dropped down to 5, and by tomorrow morning it's supposed to be 21 below zero. I've had the stove going out in the workshop for a while now. I've already put two coats of paint on that towel holder that we were making yesterday. And right now I'm cutting up some chicken wings. We're going to deep fry these and do a, we bought some of the buffalo wild wing sauce and we're going to make our own french fries. 
We got a new french fry cutter here, so we're going to give that a try. I have the deep fryer heating up right now and first the potatoes go in for five or six minutes at 275 degrees and then we're going to take them out and dump them on paper towels and then I'm going to let those cool down and I'll do the chicken wings and then once the chicken wings are done I'll put them in the oven at 200 degrees so they can stay warm and then I do the french fries a second boil at 350 degrees. Yep. I would think so. So you can hang from it. <laughs> It's 4.30 in the afternoon. I just put some more wood in the stove. Five degrees outside, 68 in here. I'm gonna go up to that front garage and I wanna pull out all the grates from my old smoker. And then I have two vacuum sealers and that were at the Hobby Farm house and I don't know where they are, but Melissa needs one of them, so I'm gonna try to find one. This is not the first time I've looked for it, but I'll see if I can find it in that mess. I got the towel holder thing put in the bathroom. Later on, if I remember, we'll go in there and take a look at that. But right now I'm going to run out to that front garage. I got all the grates brought in here. That's a heavy bag, but that determines the size of the smoker. Melissa's been having me bring in all the cast iron so she can get it seasoned and put in its proper spot. And I have this old uh, cast iron humidifier, so I filled it up with water and put it here on the stove. What I've been doing out here tonight is clearing off this table. I don't know how I would get it from here into there. I mean, the snowmobile has to be moved. The old uh, joiner has to be moved. But if I can get it that far, you know, both doors will open and it will go in there. And I would just This is really going to be a nice work spot, so I thought, well, let's play around with this. And I have these two bolt motors sitting against it. Both of these are Mercury 110s. And if I remember right, like I always want to buy the 9.8 or the 9.9s. And if I, I remember buying these, ended up 
I don't know. They worked, but, uh, you know, not super good. Uh, gosh, it's been a while. And then I just went back and, and to my, that camouflage one that I have up in the tent. I mean, that thing just never dies. I had to bring it in and have a new impeller put in it. And I think they cleaned the carburetor or something. Anyway, and I think they're both 9 8 And this one, the guy told me, just had a different hood on it, which says seven, seven and a half horse. So I just sent a picture of them to Zach and said, hey, you want to fix these? And then if you can get them running good, we'll just put them for sale. And then... We'll just split the profit. And then he said that he actually wants to buy a little boat, so he would buy one of these from me. And I said, just take, you know, whatever one works best, just take it. So these two will be gone out of here, which will be nice. Uh, it's going to help me right now, and i got to get the table from here to there, but at least uh, something will happen with these. Because I have the motor up at the, up at the tent, I've got a motor on, a Johnson motor on the boat that's behind the workshop. And then Mark from Vermont, when he came up or over to the party we had this summer, he brought me uh, it's a smaller boat motor, but it's, it's going to be a nice one to have like as a spare. So I do not need these two anymore. He brought me this little four horsepower Evinrude light win. I mean, it's an older motor, but I mean, it'd be perfect up at the tent if my 9.9 or 9.8, whatever I have up there, died off. This one here would definitely get me around.
I think this is going to be an awesome workspace. And with this table, I will make sure that it gets leveled in. It's pretty close right now, I'm surprised. This corner right here has to come up a little bit, but I'm gonna make sure that this is completely level because there's a lot of times if you're doing a project and you wanna stand it you know, straight up and down and then level it, you can't unless the base is level. So this will be a nice bright because there's a light right above it. This is gonna be awesome. This table smells, it's got a musty smell to it. It reminds me of my grandpa and grandma on my mom's side, her mom and dad. They had an old farmhouse on 80 some acres. Anyway, the basement, part of it had a cement floor and part of it was still a dirt floor. I mean, it was a really old place. And you'd walk in, you would walk into this little entryway and then you could go down some kind of rickety steps, you know, to go down to the basement. And then it was like, four steps up and then you were in the kitchen area just the, the typical old farmhouse but when you'd walk in that door the smell was always the same because it was you could smell that basement and you know it's not a bad smell it's just this musty smell and it immediately when i started sweeping this one and i could smell that it was like it just totally reminded me of my grandpa and grandma's house originally i was going to pull this up and over and run the legs on this side of the this curb here but I've actually been really thinking about it. I have to go to Louisiana pretty soon. And then when I get back, then Melissa's going to go down to Louisiana. And maybe when she's in Louisiana, I will rent a jackhammer and get this pulled out of here. But anyway, for uh, since this is exactly four feet wide, I'll probably put a piece of plywood over the top of this because that's something then that once it gets full of glue and drilled holes and stuff, you can get rid of it and put a new one on. And I'll probably just get a piece of three quarter inch and then I'll run it over to here because just overhang it so then you can walk right here and work on this surface also without even worrying about the curve otherwise you're kind of reaching over it. After looking at this once I do get that curb busted out of there I am going to move it that 10 inches to the right because I like having the opening in front of those doors wide open so that if you have to drive the four-wheeler in here to do something in the winter or you could buzz a snowmobile in here, the six-wheeler could come in here, whatever. Uh, I would have a straight shot. I don't have to worry about going off to an, at an angle over here. I think that's good enough for today. wonder what the temperature is. 729, it's minus 3 right now. We'll see what it is in the morning. Good morning, everybody. The app on my phone says that the feels like right now or the wind chill is 40 below zero. And there is a little bit of a breeze out there out of the northwest, and it is raw. It says it's 37 degrees in here. And my this one says it's 22 below actual temperature outside. I'm going to go inside and stay warm and let it warm up in the workshop for a while. After they rescued us, I... I just brought you guys some leftovers from last week's Christmas meal. <laughs> Those chickens don't do a whole lot of talking when it's... Well, it was, what, 24 below this morning or whatever, and now it's uh, warmed up to 17 below zero. Melissa, today is New Year's Day, so Melissa's making black-eyed peas and cabbage with ham inside in there and, I don't know, a bunch of stuff. But I, we have a small, like a lamb roast, or I don't know what you'd call it. And uh, I had said last week that I would do it on the grill today, so gonna get this ready it's not time to start it up yet but might as well get it dug out
someone who doesn't play by the rules. Shauna. What's that supposed to mean? cream sandwiches in the freeze dryer. They turn out really good and uh, we really like them so we're doing a second batch. to get Powerball tickets. We buy them maybe one time a year. <laughs> That's it, maybe twice once in a while. But the jackpot is at what, 635 million right now? 50 million, of course that wouldn't be enough, 100 million. <laughs> Gotta wait till it's way up over 500 million. Plug my truck in again because tonight's going to be colder than last night. Good morning, everybody. It's a balmy 28 degrees below zero right now. I have not, uh, when did I put wood in the stove? I don't know, it was noon yesterday maybe, so it's chilly in here. I think the high today is going to be 7 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. Get the stove going and see how nice it will be out here in the workshop. It's almost 8 o'clock in the morning right now. Come out here in maybe an hour and see what it's like out here. because right now it's chilly. Somebody had mentioned in a, I don't know, previous video that I put up that I should get a mobile base for my table saw so that I could just move it out of the way if I needed more room. And I thought to myself, the saw came with a mobile base, but I took it out and just threw it in the back part. So I'm digging that out because that might be a good idea. You know, I can just slide it out of the way if I need to. And you can lock these wheels up. This one is froze. I put some uh, WD-40 on there, but this one here you can lock and this one you can lock. So. Uh, it'll stay in one place. But this table, the screws that are in here that hold these two front, or these whatever, front legs, side legs, whatever, um, they have heads that stick above the woodwork, um, or this tabletop. 
So I'm going to pull these. I don't know if I'll have to countersink down or whatever. I want to get some different screws so it's level. And then with this router that sits in here that I thought I would never ever use because I have my router table, this would have came in really handy when I was doing that, uh, oh, the towel holder thing. Instead of having to pull out the uh, router table, I could have just popped this up and used this one. And the thing is, it only has a half inch uh, chuck in there, and I have both half inch and the quarter inch shanks for in here, so I just ordered a quarter inch for this and a new half inch, because this one is real rusty. They're only like $15 a piece, so they should be here in about five days. And I think, I hope, <laughs> that this router works. I guess I should plug that in and check it. Another thing it would be nice for is I have bits to do tongue and groove, but you know, once you set those, they need to be set perfectly and stay perfectly until that project is done. If I only have one router table, I'd be switching the bit, and then you're gonna have to constantly, you know, put your pattern piece in to make sure it's just right. I could set up one side on my little router bench thing and then have the other one in here and be able to run them through without having to switch anything out. Well, I got that done, but I just heard my phone ding. It's time for lunch. This uh, vacuum cleaner, I was vacuuming in the house, yesterday was it, and the hose broke here. And so I went online to get a different hose, and of course I couldn't get one from Amazon or from whatever, Dirt Devil, whoever makes them. Uh, even though I just bought this thing a couple years ago. Anyway, I could get one on eBay for $40 and $10 shipping. Well, I'm up to 50 bucks. A brand new one of these was $79, so I just ordered a brand new one. It'll be here in a couple days, but I thought if I could get this hose to seal good enough here, I could at least use it to do the rugs that are in the workshop here. I got this tape that's so strong you can't rip it. I was thinking about starting building the new smoker, but it's Sunday today and I will be ending this video because I can tell I've got a lot of stuff filmed on here. I'm getting worried that it's getting pretty long. So I thought why I hate starting a project in this video and then happen to end it in the next video. Uh, which it happens sometimes, but still. So that's why I've been just playing around with 
getting the mobile thing underneath the saw and then I decided, you know, I'm going to play around with this. I'm guessing since this spirals, you know, the tape rides the top, if I don't run some caulking in here, the air can just, you know, get through there somehow. So, do the carpenter approach. A little more caulking will fix just about anything. That one cleaned up pretty nice, but that one's only had, what, a month and a half of abuse in here? These here were in the hobby farm workshop getting abused for, I don't know, 15 years probably. By tightening everything up on here and putting this bungee cord on here, it really just caused a little dust, you know, that would come through here until it got full and now it was blowing stuff all over. So I thought, Melissa uses these shavings in her rabbit cages. So I'm gonna go ahead and see how full this is. But otherwise it worked awesome compared to at the hobby farm house when we did it. Uh, it was never bungeed down, so you get more. Yeah, it really did keep everything in there real nice. This time around, I'm going to see if one of these bags will fit in here. easy to pull it right out and it's full. Okay everyone, well thanks a lot for watching. Sunday night, need to get that garbage can down. Tomorrow the new week will start. I will see you guys on the next video.